OK, so, so a few people answered something else. M the largest part, part answered uh, A, equal forces in, in both directions. My first question me might be to you, because it was asked to me, does the motion matter for the forces? If it's sitting here like that and not moving, are there a different set of forces on it than if it is exactly at the same position but moving upward? Or exactly at the same position but moving downward? How does the, what's the spring force depend on? You probably remember the spring potential energy. Uh, height. Equilibrium. Spring potential energy looks like that. The slope of that tells you the force. This is spring plus, and, and, okay, the slope of that tells you the force. Here's the mass spring potential energy. So what's the slope at the equilibrium point? Zero. The net force is zero. The force by the spring plus the force by the earth has to cancel, has to give you zero. The equilibrium point is the point at which there is no net force on it. And you use this diagram whether things were moving or not, because it doesn't matter whether things are moving or not. Forces have to do with the interactions. And the interaction with the earth is constant. The interaction with the spring depends on how much you stretched it. And so when you're exactly at equilibrium, the stretch of the spring is the same whether the object is moving or not. It's a, the equilibrium point, there is a stretch to the spring, and so there is a force upward by the spring and a force downward by the earth. And it doesn't matter whether it's moving through the equilibrium point or not, that is still true. But there's something else you know about a mass on a spring. And you can tell from this, from this potential energy sketch here. And that's that if, you, if the height goes up, then the potential energy goes up from the equilibrium point. And the force gets bigger and bigger because the slope gets bigger and bigger as you go farther and farther. Um, the direction of the force if you remember from 7a, forces are always directed toward lower potential energy. The lowest potential energy in this mass spring problem is at the equilibrium point. So the force is always directed toward the equilibrium point. If the equilibrium point is right here and I'm above it, then there's a net force on this mass downward. And if I'm below it, there's a net force on the mass upward. And that's called a restoring force. If there's an equilibrium point, and if you push it away from equilibrium, a force shows up that tries to bring it back. Then it's called a restoring force. It's trying to restore equilibrium. Equilibrium doesn't always ha mean that there's a restoring force. If I have a, a ball that's sitting at the top of a hill, it might be in equilibrium and might be able to sit there, but if I move it a little bit away from equilibrium and let go, it's not going to come back to equilibrium. It's just going to roll down the hill and disappear. So equilibrium would not be the top of a hill. It would be the, the uh, uh, equilibrium. They're both equilibrium, but equilibrium with a restoring force would be more like the bottom of the hill. So when I push it away from the bottom, it rolls back again. If I push it the other direction, it rolls back again. There are tons of things with uh, potential energy curves that look a little like this. You know about some of them. Um, 
two atoms bound together near their equilibrium point, near their equilibrium bond length. They oscillate about equilibrium. That's just one that you talked about in 7a. There are many things. There, this bowling ball has an equilibrium point. If I push it, and it's so that's with the, the wire straight down. If I push it away from equilibrium, well, that's fine. I can hold it here. But when I let go, there's a force on the bowling ball pushing it back toward equilibrium. If I push it the other way and let go, a force pushes it back toward equilibrium. There's a restoring force for this bowling ball. The bowling ball on a string is, is called a pendulum. There's a restoring force that always tries to bring it back to equilibrium. It has a potential energy curve, if we, straight, if we calculated it carefully, that looks a little bit like that, unless you go too far. I mean, if I, if I go way out of equilibrium, so I make, I don't want to do that because I'm going to, well, I don't know. I'm going to probably take pieces of this thing off if I let it go. Um, but if I go way out of equilibrium, so the angle with compared to equilibrium is really big, like this is maybe, I don't know, 40, 45 degrees, um, then it turns out the thing is, an, it's still an oscillator, still has a restoring force. But it isn't called, the, the name we, the, we wouldn't use the name harmonic oscillator. Harmonic oscillator is when the oscillation looks like a sine wave. The mass on a spring, it turns out, looks like a sine wave. And there are lots of other things that oscillate. This little, this little dis, uh, uh, wheel right here can hang from a, a sharp point, from a fulcrum. And if I twist it out of equilibrium, there's a restoring torque. Equilibrium, well, straight when the center of mass is directly below that, in other words, the center of this this uh, circle is directly below the fulcrum, then it's an equilibrium point. <coughs> There's no net torque on it. But if I move it away from equilibrium, if I move it counterclockwise, then there's a clockwise restoring torque. If I rotate it clockwise away from equilibrium, then there's a restoring torque that is counterclockwise that tries to bring it back to equilibrium. In either case, it rocks back and forth the same way this bowling ball goes back and forth oscillates about the equilibrium value. So I probably answered this one. I may have answered several of them. Let's find out. Um, mass hangs from a spring, as shown to the right. When the mass is stretched down so that it is below its equilibrium point and released, what's the force diagram look like? <coughs> 